we don't do enough intro type big giant titles in Blender um, nowadays. So hey guys, we're back to Test by Kai Kai, and today we are back in Blender once again. Take a look at how to create this giant like booming title. I guess you could use as an intro as well. Um, so we're gonna get started today. I wanted to delete everything in the scene except for the uh, lamp and the camera. So pretty much just the cube. Um, actually, what we can do with the camera, instead of deleting that, we hit Alt-G and Alt-R to clear the rotation and the location of the camera. I usually don't like to do that because I just like to add it back in, but uh, we can do that uh, for today's tutorial. RX90 on my keyboard and Enter to confirm that selection. Drag that right on back to behind the grid. Hit 0 on my numpad to go into the front into the camera's view. All right, we got everything set up now. I want to hit GZ to bring my camera up just a little bit, just so it's kind of sitting on the grid. And we're going to RX, and we're going to throw that camera up like that. We're going to rotate it up a bit, something like that. So if we look at our camera now, as you see, it's kind of like pointing up at the uh, at the grid like that. Um, so first things I want to do is I want to add in a, a plane. So we can hit Shift A or go over here to Create and add in a plane. Hit S on my keyboard to scale that up. And we're going to scale that up pretty big, actually. Um, maybe something like uh, maybe something like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I want to take our I want to take this time right now and take our lamp, drag this uh, right hand panel open and, and change this lamp to a spot lamp. I want to change that to a spot lamp for the time being. We're probably not going to leave this in the scene, but I do want to have this just so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to go to cycles render by the way, and uh, go to render shading. This is what we have so far. I want to turn the in the world tab. I want to turn the world. All the way down to a solid black like that so we have this pretty much just a silhouette of this uh this spot lamp which looks pretty nice uh so i want to go ahead and change this the size of the lamp and the blend all the way up like i said we're probably not gonna keep that light i just want to keep it for the time being i might use that um but just for the time being i want to have that uh so we can see what we're doing all right shift a or go over here to create and add in a text object rx 90 on my keyboard and enter to confirm that rotation i'm going to choose a text font right now what i'm going to do is go ahead and go down to my fonts folder and i'm just going to pick a really quick font um something maybe yeah i want to go with something that's kind of heavy and dense and i don't really have uh that many heavy dense uh fonts on my computer right now i'm going to be using this font right here i'll link down in the description um, but, uh, but that was pretty good for, for today's tutorial. So I want to go ahead, hit tab on my keyboard and edit the text. You can change it to whatever you want. You can change it to whatever, um, but I'm going to leave it as, uh, mm, mm, I'm going to, I'm going to make it say tutorial. Yeah, sure. Why not? That's not generic. Okay. Uh, we're going to change the extrude value to somewhere around 270. Um, but this is all going to depend on what type of font you use. Like for this type of font right here, it's, it's pretty thick. Um, so I'm going to use a pretty big uh, extrude value. But if I were using something like, uh, let's see, a very thin font like this guy, I wouldn't want to go with that thick of an extrude value. You can see how, how bad that looks compared to that. So we're going to be doing an impactful font today. So I kind of want to go with that S on my keyboard to scale that on up, something like that. Pretty, pretty big. You know, down here in the bottom, I'm, I'm going to turn the horizontal alignment to center instead of left. And now we're pretty much set up. I want to go back into our camera's view and um, go ahead and hit G and double tap Z to move our camera back and up and double tap Z and back and up. Something like that. I might rotate it down a little bit. Just uh, something like that. I kind of want to get this large feeling. So I want to go ahead and uh, hit G Y and change the Y axis right here. Maybe R X. Just just trying to position this guy exactly where we want him, um, so we know exactly what we're doing here. So looks pretty good for now. I want to change the focal length of the camera as well, so we can turn that down um, to somewhere around 26 ish, and then we can move our camera in even more with G and Y. Um, so if we give it this look right now, you should be able to see that we have our tutorial font which is shining through, looks pretty good. Um, what I want to do is uh, select, our, se select our camera, go to the camera tab and hit border so we can only see the border of our render so it's a bit quicker. Um, and now here comes the fun part. Um, now that you have your text all set up and it's just how you want it, I do want you to hit Shift D and right click that to cancel that movement and hit M to move it to a second layer just so we can have a duplicate of that so we can edit it if we need to. So with our text selected, we're going to hit Alt C and hit Mesh from Curve Meta Surf Text. And what this does is it makes it so that when we hit Tab, we can no longer edit what the text says, but we can actually edit the faces and the vertices and the polygons and whatever else. 
um, which is really helpful because what we need to do right now is hit five on our numpad and three on our numpad to go ahead and go to the side view of the text. That's the side view. And if I go into tab mode and hit this little box down here, you should be able to see we see all the vertices. You see all the vertices all the way straight through. So if I select, if I go ahead and with brush with my brush mode, I can just select all these vertices. We can select all the ones all the way through all of our text instead of just the front couple ones. So I'm going to go back to the side view and hit B on my keyboard and drag a box through the center of all of these faces in face select mode, by the way. Um, and now you can see that we have all the side faces selected, which is exactly what we need. So over in the materials materials tab, I'm going to choose the default material we have in Blender. Um, and then I'm going to hit this little plus button to add a new material in this same like material string, I suppose. Hit new on that, and I'm going to change this to like a green color, I guess we can do green. That's kind of neon -y. And then I'm going to change the diffuse surface to an emission surface right there. And I'm also going to hit assign. Um, now what this has done is if we go back to render viewport shading, you see all of the uh, faces where we had selected are now using the emission surface of that green um, edge that we had uh, that we had just made over here on the side. What I also want to do is I also want to hit Alt I, uh, Control I, sorry, and invert our selection, and then go back up to this first material that we had up here, and we're going to hit Assign on that as well. So now, with the material that we just assigned to the front facing and the back facing faces, um, we can turn this off. By the way, we can turn this little selection box off down here. I'm gonna hit Use Nodes and Changes just for now. I'm gonna change the diffuse to glossy. Uh, we are going to mess around with the nodes uh, later on, but I'm just going to change that to 0.1 for the roughness right about now. Um, ooh, uh, and uh, that's going to be good for now. Oh, maybe we'll go a bit lower than that. 0 0.05. It's really windy today, so if you hear something in the background, that's wind, by the way. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so we have that going on right now. We will fix that up later on. But what I want to do at the moment is go back out of re rendered viewport shading, and I want to go ahead and start animating our text. So on the first frame, I'm going to hit I on our keyboard and I uh, choose location with our text selected and on the fifth frame I'm gonna hit I location um, so now on the first frame that we added I'm gonna hit G Z and move our our text up out of the camera's view and hit I once again to insert that location frame so now that when we scroll through the frames you can see that it goes boom smacks on the plane right there on the fifth frame so now if we play this kind of slow so what I want to do is I want to open up the dope sheet by dragging this little triangle and opening and splitting our view into two change this cube to the dope sheet and I can go ahead and select this keyframe right here and just hit G and move that over by two frames or so and make that animation a little bit faster which is nice alright so um, we have a really cool emission type thing I want to select our lamp really quickly and uh, change the emission color of the lamp to something that clashes with the with with the green. So maybe like a blue, not a yellow because that's too close. Maybe we'll go with like a blue with purple, like a bluey purple. Yeah, sure. Um, that looks pretty pretty good. I also want to duplicate our our spot lamp here by hitting Shift D and then hit R Z to rotate on the Z axis, and we're going to move it in so that it is uh, facing front of the tutorial words. And then we'll go back to re render viewport shading. Now we can see the um, the letters a bit better. As you can see, I, if I scroll this lamp back and forth, you can see that we now have this kind of blue shine effect in the text, which is really cool. I want to hit Use Nodes and change the strength of this to eh, maybe maybe more than that, to 300. Yeah, sure. So now when we scroll this lamp back and forth, you can see that we have a really cool effect going on right there. Um, and I might, you know what? I might want to actually change this from the bluish. Hmm. I don't know. I kind of like... I kind of like that blue. We'll go with that blue instead. And we'll also change the color of this lamp as well. We'll change that to like a darker purple, maybe. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, maybe. Why not? Sure. Yeah, alright. So, that looks pretty good for our lighting setup. What I want to do now is I want to animate our camera. 